President Trump expressing his thanks to San Diego County after the Board of Supervisors voted to support the federal lawsuit against California's sanctuary policies. The three to one vote last week is rejecting a state law that limits local police collaboration with federal immigration officials. Joining me right now is the chairman of that board, Kristen Gaspar. Kristen, good to see you. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Why are you pushing back? Oh boy, we have a governor who's rolling out the welcome mat for MS-13 gang members in the state of California. We have a governor who consistently lets criminals walk out on our streets and pardons others. It's all packaged in the interest of neighborhood and school safety, but in San Diego, we're saying enough is enough to Governor Brown and his unsafe policies, including SB 54. So what has been the impact of these open door policies? I, I mean, I'm scratching my head. I don't understand what the pushback to federal law really is. Any country wants to have borders and immigration, legal immigration should be front and center as opposed to illegal immigration. So I don't understand why the pushback and tell us what the impact of it has been, these open, open borders from your standpoint. Sure, we're left in San Diego wondering where has all the common sense gone? Since January alone, we're talking about 284 criminals now walking our streets. In the state of California, since this policy was passed, 142 gang members released back into st sanctuary states. California took the brunt of it with nearly 90 criminal gang members released back into California. These are the numbers. People need to understand the facts. This is one to three people released each and every day in San Diego, not tracked at all, just back out into our community. So you think this is really ideologies, this resist movement, this has, th this has nothing to do with common sense. This is just, let's push back on anything that President Trump says or does. If people have an interest in public safety, I don't know how you argue it. It's important to know that you hear a lot about, well, we can't have people who are in our country illegally not reporting crimes, being fearful of contacting our deputies. It's important to understand this was never the case. When our deputies went out and responded to calls by law enforcement, they were never even asking about citizenship status. So this argument does not hold up at all. So where does this go now, do you think? I mean, you're pushing back. Uh, there are a lot of people, including your governor, who says, no, we are not going to uh, tell law enforcement when we know illegals are here and when, they're, when ICE is out after them. So where do you think this goes from here? Well, there's a movement, and you can see it up and down the state of California, and it's really important because each and every community needs to tell the narrative of the direct impacts of SB 54. And the next steps are in the hands of the courts, but we can file briefs. We can share that narrative, and our briefs that we're filing with the courts tell our individual stories in our communities, so it's incredibly important that this movement continue. All right, we'll be watching. Kristen, great to have you on the program. Thanks very much for weighing in this morning. We certainly will be watching your county. Eleven congressional Republicans are demanding Attorney General Jeff Sessions open criminal investigations into Jim Comey, Hillary Clinton, and others. One of those lawmakers, House Judiciary Committee member Ron DeSantis, joins me next about his expectations. We're looking ahead this Sunday morning on Sunday Morning Futures. Back in a moment.